Today's video will be in two parts, and in the first part I want to talk a little bit about the Canon G5X. This is a camera that I did a full review on a few months ago, and since then I've had the opportunity to use this camera fairly extensively, and I want to do a follow-up on that, talk about some of the things that I really like. Um, the second part of this video is a vlog that I shot last weekend with my friend Eric Rossi. We were at Coney Island in New York, and uh, we spent the day out there. The entire thing was filmed on the Canon G5X, so you can see what some of the footage looks like. So before I get to that, I want to talk a little bit about the camera and do a follow-up. I will put a link in the show description to the original review if you want to see what all the specifications are. Um, since I've had the chance to use this, it really has become my main camera for vlog style stuff, for run and gun footage. Anytime I need a camera where I can switch back and forth easily between stills and video, but I need something small. This last trip I did to New York last week, this was the only camera that I took with me and it was great. Um, and so there's some things that I really like about it. First thing I want to address though are these fuzzy things that are on the top because everybody always asks me about them. Um, essentially, if you've ever shot video with a point and shoot outdoors, you know that wind noise is a big problem just by design. So this is these are made by a company called Rycoat and it's called the Rycoat Wind Jammer. And basically you use these included stickers and you put place these over the microphones and they cut down on the wind noise. Um, they do make the camera look really weird and really goofy and it's kind of a goofy design already, but they work and they get the job done and that's really important. I'm gonna mention a few things that I really like about this camera and uh, this really has become kind of my go-to for that style of shooting. And I get asked a lot, you know, what do you think of this as a vlog camera? I think it's incredible as a vlog camera. Um, first, I'll start with the audio itself. So in the first video that I did, one of the complaints that I had is that you do have a hot shoe but no microphone input. And that still is a little bit of a problem. I would prefer to use some kind of small shotgun mic on here. Having said that though, the microphones that are inside the camera are probably two of the best microphones that I've used on any point and shoot. They do the job pretty well. Um, wind noise is a problem, but that's not the microphones. That's just the design of the camera. Um, but the only issue that I've had with it, and you'll see this in part of the video, is anytime you have a lot of ambient noise in the room, it's hard to get much separation between people who are speaking in the video and the rest of the noise. Now that would be um, not a problem if you were able to use a shotgun mic, but for the most part, for 90% of the situations that you're in, uh, if you don't have loud ambient noise, it's fine. Um, the other things that I like about this camera, first of all, the image stabilization on here is probably the best image stabilization I've ever used on any camera. It really is excellent. Um, I really can't say enough good stuff about that. And for those of you who watch my channel, you know that I've had some very shaky videos in the past and you'll see what it looks like uh, coming up. It's not a steady cam, but it does the job really well. A couple other things that I really like, the articulating screen, a lot of these large point and shoot cameras, the screen will flip over the top of the camera. This one has an electronic viewfinder, which I like, but it makes it hard to design it the same way. So Canon have designed it so it pulls out and then you can flip it around like that. It'll go 180, but you get all these other articulations in between that make this very usable for doing kind of different angles and stuff like that. In fact, I don't know why every digital camera doesn't have an articulating screen now. That kind of is beyond me, but that is the case. Big fan of the articulating screen that's on here. Another thing I really like, I was a little strange at first is the way that Canon just kind of pasted a dial up on the front here. But what I like about this is once you get used to using this camera and the way it's set up, you use these dials to control various things like manual focus, aperture, shutter speed, ISO, and you have basically three dials that, that, that are on the camera. You have one around the lens, you've got this weird location at the top, and you've got one on the back. I actually like this dial placed here. It's out of the way, you don't accidentally hit it, and many of you know that I'm also a big fan of the Sony RX100 Mark IV. And I still use this camera, it, its image quality is exceptional, but between the two, in certain situations, this camera is still really fiddly. And a lot of that is the way that Sony just designs their stuff. The menu system's fiddly. Sometimes it's really easy to hit the dial accidentally when you're setting up to film. So I still use this for certain things, but it comes down to the right tool for the right job. And when it's run and gun shooting, where you're just improvising with what's around you, I really prefer the Canon. It's a lot less fiddly. The only complaint that I have about this camera is that Canon have it kind of built into the processor where it tends to over sharpen images somewhat. Now you can go in and I have, I've created a custom picture profile where you just basically go in and turn the sharpness all the way down. It still is just a hair sharp. Now sharpness is funny because it's something that that's very easy to add in post-production. It's very difficult to take away if something's overly sharpened. And so that's one thing that I wish that Canon would change on here. In fact, I'll go a step further and say that I really hope that somebody comes out with some kind of third-party hackware like Magic Lantern or something that allows you to put alternative firmware on the camera to have a little bit more control 
control over things like that. That's the only complaint that I have, and it's a little bit of a minor complaint. Footage is still very usable, but it does, does tend to over-sharpen somewhat in both still raw images and video as well. Anyway, I'm gonna show you the vlog footage right now so you can see what we did. So, Eric has been a friend of mine for a long time. He's got a wonderful YouTube channel. I will link him up. Go check him out. Eric's a great guy. We've been friends for a couple of years now, just online. It's the first time we've ever met face to face. And we decided to go out to Coney Island to spend the day. And the original idea is that I was going to go out there and fly my drone. And you'll see in the footage, I we didn't actually get that far. But anyway, uh, we did have a lot of fun. And Eric will release his version of our vlog as well. So you can go over to his channel and check that out. But uh, anyway, that's the Canon G5X. And here's what the footage looks like. This was our day at Coney Island. This guy has been, oh, it's actually, has been vlogging most of the day. Most of you guys know Eric Rossi. This is the first time we've met. It is. And uh, we're back lit cool for a couple of photographers. It's but, great. Yeah, we have had a pretty good day. We spent like three hours on this train because we didn't get off at the right stop. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I'll show you where we're going. Best hot dog in Coney Island. Do you agree? Good. I do agree. It's amazing. You concur. And yeah. I accidentally took a bite before I vlogged it. Oh, I did too. It's a uh, it's no bueno. I wish I had it, but <laughs> look at this. This is amazing. Yeah. And we got cheese fries. Yeah, very excited. Yep. <laughs> We're filming our food. Anything food. Photographer nerds. Only love Instagram. It. do a video today because today would have been Harold Feinstein's birthday. Today's the 16th yeah. of April. That's why we're at Coney Island and so I needed to get something up to commemorate that in some way and so that's why we got the carousel and all this. Now the unfortunate demise of this is the evil plan was that I have a drone on my back. And so far, so far. So far. We may try to work it out. In honor of Harold and his birthday, I think Harold would have wanted me to put the drone up over the water and get this wonderful shot of Coney Island. I forgot the lightning cable that connects my phone to the RC. It kind of requires that. So we're still looking around to see if there's a gift shop that has a lightning cable. But anyway, I wanted to do a quick video today to get this up and say happy birthday, Harold. You're the best. This right here is the lonely drone. I failed epically. No drone over Coney Island. All down to the cable. It'd be one thing if I had chickened out. Would have been something. That would have been bad. I, well, I wouldn't have chickened out. I'm in. I'm in. Somehow. You, you wouldn't have let me chicken it. You would have shamed no. me into flying. No, we were going to hide in the corner. That's true. It, it, it would have done. But then I didn't have the cable. Yeah. So light bridge, no light bridge, no go. Lonely drone. That's bad. No bueno. No bueno, I'm ready. <laughs> 